Hello pilots and welcome to another video. Just recently I made a video about how to update INAV 2.6 to 3.0 with the current release candidate one as an example. And my friend Darren made also a video about the same topic and described it in detail. We both mentioned that after updating you should reset your complete fixed string tune and use one of the both presets that are in INAV 3.0. And today I want to show you how to properly tune your plane to get back a perfect tune and a well play flying plane. First of all, we start to talk about the new auto trim. There are now two ways to trim your servo center points. Uh, the old method is of course still there. We have the auto trim flight mode or auto uh, auto trim tuning mode you enable it the same way as before you set a channel and a spe specific channel range to enable it and as soon as you enable it INAV will collect servo position information and try to average them out to find a new center value it's important for that that you do not make any rotations on uh, the three axes roll pitch and yaw and by this the new center points can be determined and the servos are trimmed for manual flight and also are trimmed so the PIDFF controller has the least amount of work to do to keep the fly plane fly in a straight line when there's no stick input. But now with INA 3.0 we get a new feature and this you can find here in the other features section that's called continuous servo automatic trim. And what this feature is doing is it continuously monitors the integral value of the PIDFF controller to detect if the plane has to do any work or has to do any servo movement to keep it fly straight in a line when there is no stick input. To if this feature is enabled, you do not have to do any manual auto trim anymore. It will continuously account for different things like um, uh, CG problems or CG changes if you change to a different battery or also some twisting in the control surfaces from transport or whatever might happen. And by this you always have a perfectly trimmed plane with perfectly centered servos. So if you switch to manual mode, then it will just fly straight without any stick input and you have much less things to worry about. And it also makes the trimming easier and more precise than before, because if you have some wind turbulence in the old system, uh, these two second window where the servo positions are collected to estimate the center position um, can be disturbed and cause off or trim offsets afterwards. As you can see here in my case, my midpoints are 1466 and 1009, uh, 1494. And this is a pretty good uh, center trim. In this area, we can completely keep them as they are. If the deviation is higher, like 1550 or more, or 1450 or less, then you should recenter the trims here in this window. And then watch how much the control surfaces of the plane are moving back to a specific position. And after that, you mechanically trim them back to the previous position with the center trim enabled to do a complete mechanical trim. This way, you have already a very good mechanical center and uh, you keep the servo movement in both directions as equal as possible. This is something um, as well as for the old method and also for the new method you should really check after the first flight. If you did an update from 2.6 and the plane was already trimmed well you shouldn't worry about. If it's a brand new plane that's freshly set up you should really check that and uh, adjust the trim mechanically afterwards and after that fly again and if you already did an auto tune maybe also repeat the auto tune to get the most pr precise rates because if the trim is not centered here in software it might have that you get that you get uh, different surface deflections in each direction and this could mess with your rate determination we will come to that later 
Now you will see if we enable this feature and then save and reboot the flight controller, the auto trim mode will be removed from the modes tab because we don't need it anymore. It makes no sense to have both on at the same time. As you can see here above the auto tune, now the auto trim mode is completely gone. Unfortunately, it's pretty hard to show you uh, this on video, how it actually works. You have to try it yourself. Just go out, fly, land your plane, and then watch the servo midpoints, and you will see if it has worked. And you also can switch to manual mode in flight to see if the trim is applied correctly. Now let's talk about the new auto-tune. The auto-tune uh, was in INAV before, but there is some, uh, there are some changes that were made and a few new components of it. And for that reason, we have to start from fresh uh, with a new preset. We now have only two presets in INAV for fixed strings, one for planes with a tail, like with an elevator, and another preset for tailless planes that means like data wings or anything that uses elevons um, as control surfaces in my case here i select the uh, tailless plane because i have a dot 250g uh, connected right now and we apply these presets or this preset and then reboot the flight controller in the background there are a lot of things that are applied about 40 values that are set up in INAV just to make a very uh, nice flying experience and also reduce things like horizon drift. Now let me show you how this looks in flight. One of our fixed string group members, um, Koji Nakaoka, I hope I spoke that name well, uh, supplied me with a nice video where he did the auto tune on his um, Ripper L690. And as you can see, he maidened with the default pit values, but he raised the rates by himself. I don't know why he did that, but uh, anyway, the plane flew still stable, even with these high set rates. And then he switches into auto-tune mode and he perfectly shows how a proper auto-tune is done. Here you can see the default INA 3.0 values of the PIDFF controller and the rates he has set 360 degrees pitch rate and 450 degrees roll rate. After these first maneuvers, INAV doesn't change anything at all because now it's collecting data of how much rates or how high rates are reached at full stick deflection compared to the servo throw that is used. And now after he starts another maneuver, you don't need to make this pause and in this case a looping. You see the feed forward value or in general the PIFF values of pitch are rapidly rising and the roll rate goes down to 90 degrees per second. So I have successfully and really quickly uh, detected that with the given servo throw, with the given mixer, uh, the highest safe rate achievable is 90 degrees per second. Of course, you can change that later or afterwards. I will come to that after the video. And here on roll, you see uh, also the values changing. The feed forward value on roll goes down and the roll rate goes actually even higher than it was before. And this shows us that this is a very agile plane that is achievable at very high rates. And after just a few maneuvers, we can see that the values have stabilized. So the tuning is more or less done. I also did the same with my Talent 250G. As you can see here, the launch with the complete INA 3.0 defaults was battery smooth and uh, no oscillation, nothing at all. And after a few seconds of flight testing, I switched into Auto Tune 2. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, pitch and roll rates on my OSD at this point, but you can see the PIFF values change and the pitch maneuvers are pretty slow at the beginning. And now after the values change and the rates adapts, in my case, the rate actually raises because the plane is capable of a little bit more than 90 degrees per second and it adapts very fast. Then only a few roll maneuvers needed to collect the information again, what is needed. And now also here the values change. So the roll rate goes up, the feed forward value goes down a little bit. 
and this brings us to the final result after just a few mo moments. If the values don't change anymore in a big range, then the autotune is done and everything is fine. Now after the autotune is complete and the rates are determined by INF, you can of course dial them down a little bit to get a more uh, gentle feeling or a gentle flying plane. And you also have a slight headroom to raise them a little bit to get it even more aggressive that, like it is uh, after the autotune. Of course there are also options in INF to change the behavior, how the rates are determined and that can be done in the command line interface. That's not something we want to have in the graphical interface because it should only be used by advanced users. To find the settings, we type in get autotune and here you have the values we can change for this. Uh, one feature for example or one uh, setting is the fixed ring autotune ff to p gain. With this one you can set the uh, relationship between feed forward and p. If you raise this value the p gain will, or the final p gain after auto tune will get a little bit lower and you will get a softer tune. And if you lower this value you will get a higher p gain and a very locked in feel. But keep uh, be careful, don't make it too low because then you can get very strong oscillations after the tuning. The interesting settings for the rate determination are fixed ring auto tune rate adjustments. This is set to auto by default, so the rates are dialed up and down as needed to reach a constant level of rates for the plane on all three axes. You can also change that to fixed. Then you get the alt system where you set your rates beforehand and then do your auto tune. And you can set it to limit so you can beforehand, before you start the tune itself, set your highest rate you want to achieve. And INAF will only reduce them if needed, but not go higher than that. And you also have the auto tune max rate deflection. This sets or this tells INAF how much control surface deflection it is allowed to use to uh, determine the rates. By default this is at 80%. That means you have some headroom for additional stabilization by the P and I values. But you can also rise that a little or raise that a little bit to get even higher rates or the maximum rates out of your plane. But you should not go to 100%. That's not recommended. And you can also lower that uh, just to have more headroom for stabilization. And if you want to raise your uh, P, I and D gains afterwards just to have some room for the PID controller to work with. For more information about the PID FF controller you can watch Darren's video on that topic we did together and there we will uh, de in detail explain how all this works and how all this uh, acts together. Now let's talk about the last new tuning feature of INAF 3.0 that's called auto level. What this actually does is it trims your angle of attack or your pitch angle in self-leveling modes. Self-leveling modes are basically all the modes like angle, horizon and all the navigation modes that use self-leveling. And in the past we had to use the board pitch alignment on roll, pitch and yaw to tell INAV in what direction and what fine-tuned position the flight controller is located to know where exactly the level flight is or the level attitude is to keep altitude. As you can see in the configurator the board pitch alignment and board roll alignment was removed because usually Flight controllers are installed upside down, mostly nose pointing forward or with the arrow pointing forward. And uh, only the yaw direction is sometimes changed if you um, install a flight controller from left to right or backwards for cabling reasons, for example, but usually not in a vertical orientation. If you have a vertical orientation you can still do that but then you have to change the board pitch align and board roll alignment in the command line interface not anymore in the graphical ones. Now we have a new value that can be found under pit tuning and mechanics and that's fixed ring level trim and we only need this single value to align the trim pitch angle of the plane to maintain level flight and self-leveling modes without altitude hold enabled. This makes the life for the altitude pit controller easier 
and also uh, is more consistent when you trim it. And this value can be tuned automatically by the new auto level feature. In my case here, I have mapped that to my channel eight with the low value. So it's on the same switch like auto tune because I don't need auto trim anymore. Auto trim was now replaced by auto level for myself. You also can uh, map the auto level mode directly to your angle mode or to your horizon mode, whatever you prefer. So it will continuously trim the board pitch angle while you are flying in one of these two modes. Keep in mind, this feature, this auto level feature only works in these two modes, not an acro and not in a navigation mode. So basically it's only a tuning mode that's specifically used to tune your angle level. Now let me show you that feature in action. As you can see here with the Talon 250G, I fly in angle mode and right now you see a constant drop in altitude. The auto level mode is currently active. In this flight, I have mapped it to the angle mode. And it takes a while, it does not work immediately, but you can already see that the 58 meters altitude is now very stable and it's dropping slower than before. And now after the turn and a short, um, yeah, bad video feed, you can see again how it aligned very slightly, very precisely to maintain a pretty constant altitude. It's not perfect. It's not meant to be an altitude hold. And this plane is by design already made to have a very, very precise uh, pitch angle. But you can see that the uh, loss of altitude is very low at this point. Some other planes like the Dart 250G and uh, also the Stealth Rings Refax, for example, they have not aligned the angle of attack of the rings with the inside of the fuselage precisely enough to uh, maintain level flight or maintain altitude in level flight while in uh, cruise speed. So there you have a lot stronger deviation of maybe three, four, five degrees. And this feature here can really help to tune this, yeah, this pitch trim angle very easily. And it's done all automatically. So you don't have to test it yourself, like flying in angle mode, pulling pitch, remembering the uh, pitch attitude you have, and then put it into the trim. That's all not necessary anymore. You just enable auto level and INAF will do this for you by itself. So I hope you liked that video. If yes, please uh, hit the like button and also consider subscribing my channel. This will help me to grow and bring this information to more people. And I see you in the next video. Bye bye.